Hello, uh, today we're going to take a virtual tour of some of the Mississippian era sites that the book talks about. Uh, we live very near to Cahokia. Uh, I've never been to Cahokia and taken a tour there, but I've been to a few sites that are similar yet smaller throughout southeast United States and in Mississippi. So if you on the screen here we're looking at the Earth and this is using the Google Earth application and we're gonna start out by um, going into the college here we'll zoom in and if I turn on the labeling and you'll start seeing the continents divided into countries and then states we can also turn on the roads which I'll look at here in just a little bit so I'll go ahead and zoom in and we'll get started and we'll start out here at Logan and I'm going to have to zoom up here a little bit. You can scroll on in. You can see the college appearing here in the center now. And we're looking north is up and Route 13 out here. If we turn on the street view, or the, excuse me, the roads and will then label all the major roads in the area. So let's go ahead and now that we're kind of oriented to being in southern Illinois, we'll scroll back out here and we'll have Google Maps take us over to um, the St. Louis area, or east of St. Louis, to Cahokia Mounds. And it's going to zoom in here on its own. And what you're seeing here on the screen, let me reposition just a little bit and scroll out just a little bit. Basically, this is most of the modern state historic site of Cahokia Mounds. And right down in this area is the visitor center down the lower right. And then you'll see you've got um, I-70, I-55 passing there to the north. To the east, if we scrolled out, you'd see uh, I uh, 255 and the major features here are Monk's Mound here just off to the center and the upper portion of the screen and you'll see some blue dots throughout scattered throughout the site those are pictures we'll take a look at a couple of those and basically over here to the right we have the wood hinge what is known as the wood hinge area and if you looked over the other material available on Blackboard it shows some more pictures and some more descriptions about these various areas. Also you'll notice in a few places like here at the bottom and then here on the top of Monk's Mound that there's actually a big W and that is a link to the Wikipedia entry for the site and Wikipedia in this instance gives a pretty decent background and provides you some additional resources for doing more in-depth search. Now I won't vouch for all of Wikipedia content, but the material that's here is pretty good to background, a pretty good beginning point uh, for the topic. So let's go ahead and scroll in here to Monk's Mound. Let's bring that into the center and then we'll scroll in. And you'll notice there's five little blue, six blue squares here on the mound and a couple more popping up. If you click on those, they're photographs of people who have taken and uploaded. couple of them that are interesting up here on the top of the mound. In this picture we have St. Louis barely visible there in the background on the horizon. I believe there's a couple more photos here that are be a little better for that. Um, nope, that's a distant shot of the mound. Here we go. This is a better, much clearer picture. Um, you see the arch there in the background along the horizon. And this was taken from the top of Monk's Mound. We click here, the one here in the front base is showing from the South Plaza, which is described in the materials 
provided in Blackboard for you or the links that are provided talk about the various plazas and the different mounds available uh, that are still existing here on the site. So I'll go ahead and close this. And we click on that W here on the screen. Like I said, that's the Wikipedia page. I'll click on it and it'll give me a brief background uh, of the first portion of the article. I can click here to get the whole article if I like. And then it also has links to other topics that are related. And there's links provided to these within Blackboard, so you can get to those from there. Let's go ahead and scroll back out again here. And we're going to go over here to the area this is called Woodhenge. And if we click on some of these pictures, you'll see some of the, the rebuilt area where they've reconstruction, reconstructed Woodhenge. And there's three photos of this area. This is looking back on a couple of the other mounds. And if you want to take a longer look at these pictures, you can just replay the video and pause it here. Some of these pictures are also included with the links to, in, to the Flickr slideshows. And you can get a little better picture of these from those. Okay, so if we scroll back out, you'll see some of the the various lakes and things or ponds that were created throughout the area uh, from digging the dirt up to be used on the mound. If we scroll on back out a little bit further, notice we have St. Louis over here on the left and then the proximity of um, the historic site to the Mississippi River. Okay, we're going to just go ahead and scroll on back out here and we're going to have Google Earth take us into um, Etowah Mounds, which is in Georgia. It's a little north of Atlanta. It's very near a town known as Cartersville. It's got an S in the middle, as opposed to Carterville, where I'm currently sitting. So let's go ahead and have go ahead and take us into that site. Once again, this site has. Um, I believe seven mounds all together that are still existing. There are markers here for some user generated content and I'm going to scroll out just a little bit. And this is the visitor center here. If I scroll a little bit further you can see uh, this is Cartersville and this is a probably 45 minutes north of Atlanta. And if we scroll in, this is the main mound that's existing still. It has been reconstructed. Now, these have been uh, partially restored. Uh, there are trees growing around the perimeter of the, the main mound here. And if we click here, there are some pictures from the side or from the top of some of the other mounds. Uh, this is from the larger mound looking on to the second highest mound. Another picture there. Once again you see this is located very near a river and you'll see a feature here. There's a V shape and I can zoom in a little bit on that but I'm not going to zoom in too close or it'll start pixelating. But you see this ridge right here. There's a V shape. That's actually, this river is fairly uh, shallow and actually these are stones that have been stacked in the river and it creates an area choke point here so that fish coming down actually have to travel down this V unless the river is um, high from, there's been a lot of rain, the fish are channeled down through there and it's easy to kill them with a spear or with a net and that was uh, reconstructed from the remains they found Now there was some user generated content um, that another user of Google Earth had created and one of the sites they point out is this one but they also point out a, sites from all over south the southeastern United States. So I'm going to go ahead and load those pieces of information. You see the little black and white uh, box that appears here on this site and if we scroll out 
Excuse me. Scroll on out here some more. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the streets and roads. Now you see all these little uh, black and white boxes that appear. These are other um, sites throughout the southeast from the same time period and they're described in your book they're also described in the the material provided within blackboard for this uh, unit and it'll talk about some of these various areas the another site like I said I've been to this one in Georgia I've also been to Emerald Mound which you see listed right here and we're gonna go ahead and zoom in on that one it's one of the other ones marked by the the content that the user had entered within uh, Google Earth for these other sites and I'm going to go ahead and scroll in we'll visit Emerald Mound next and Emerald Mound is located once again very near the Mississippi River it is very near Natchez Mississippi not it's probably a couple hours from New Orleans and this mound, the main part of the mound is about 95 feet high. So when you drive up to the site, you're actually driving through an old growth forest area. And it's really strange to walk up on the mound and be standing over this dense forest area, but you're standing over the top of all the trees looking down upon it. And in the description of Cahokia Mounds, I mean Monk's Mound, when you go in and read the material on that you'll hear them talking about there being a main, main a plaza on top of some of these mounds and then a high, another mound that was up where the priest would live or maybe where the um, some kind of religious site would be that's what this area is here off to the west this kind of oval shape here there's uh, two levels of a raised mound on top and if I remember correctly, the top of this mound was actually about the size of a football field. And if we scroll out here a little bit, you'll see how dense the the forest is in that area. And scroll out a little bit further, and let me turn on the, the highways again. Um, this Natchez Trace Parkway runs from Nashville. Tennessee all the way to Natchez Mississippi and this is one of the sites along that road it's uh, actually quite an interesting uh, road to travel it's like driving through a state park the entire length of that journey uh, there's no semis allowed no big trucks and it's just like driving through a park it's got like a 50 55 mile an hour speed limit it's just a two-lane road but about every half hour or so there are things you can stop and see if you're interested in doing that uh, places to go picnicking and other things so we'll scroll on back out a little bit further and you see here's the city of Natchez Mississippi and we've got the Mississippi River running along here so I just thought seeing how the proximity of some of these various areas and with our close proximity to uh, Cahokia that uh, this might be an interesting uh, visualization of what you're reading about in the textbook.